The former Palestinian foreign minister, Nasser al-Kidwa, is running in May's parliamentary elections. People are disillusioned with politics as usual, and he has formed a new and independent party. Nasser al-Kidwa is joining me now from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Welcome to the program. So listen, can I start by asking you, how you got to this point of, of running and creating a new party because you were part of Fatah, you are, you know, the nephew of the Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat, and now you've been thrown out of the, of the party. Why have you decided that it's so necessary and urgent that you would risk being thrown out of your own historic, you know, political tribe, so to speak? Well, uh Thank you, thank you, Christian, for having me first. And secondly, let me say this. Uh, I was not planning to be expelled from my party, and I don't recognize this expulsion anyway. Let me add also that uh, we don't have a party. We have a gathering, a political gathering, that might develop into uh, something more formal at a later stage. But to answer you, your question, how did, did I get here, I think there is a general Palestinian feeling that the situation has got very bad uh, in terms of both the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict and in terms of the internal Palestinian situation. And as such, uh, there was a feeling that there is a need for a change, deep and broad change, that could uh, uh, face those difficulties and try to provide answers and we have done just like just that. I mean, we quickly formed this uh, Palestinian National Democratic Assembly, and we established, uh, a, we put uh, together a program, very serious program, comprehensive, that provide not only analysis, but provide answers, and more, moreover, specific tasks for those who might uh, be elected to the Legislative Council at a later mm -hmm. stage, so they can be, of course, judged on the basis of that. So let, let me ask you, you know, let's, let's just take what you say is wrong with internal Palestinian politics before we address the conflict between you and, and Israel. You know, I spoke to Hanan Ashrawi, another very well-known to the international community Palestinian official. She, too, resigned, uh, you know, because she didn't like some of what was going on. This is what she told me about what the Palestinian people are sick of and what they want. We do want good governance. We do want complete representation. We do want an accountable uh, system of government. And uh, like many uh, uh, systems of power that have been in place for a long time, they tend to fossilize with time. And I think uh, what we need is a, is a job to jar and to say that this cannot go on anymore. So, Nasr al Kidwa, do you agree that Mahmoud Abbas's Palestinian Authority has fossilized? Well, the, the main thing is the overall situation, and let me say that I do agree generally with what uh, my friend Hanan said. There is a need for good governance, there is a need for the rule of law, there is a need for a real fight uh, against corruption, there is a need for uh, democratic rights, uh, among people. We have been always proud people that, that uh, enjoy our freedoms and, and exercise this freedom proudly. So it's a bit difficult. It's really difficult for, for some of us, for all of us probably, to live into uh, or under these, these conditions, these circumstances. And that's why, again, we want that serious change, deep and broad change. So let, let me ask you, because there's talk that potentially um, Fatah, the, the, the dominant party on the West Bank, and Hamas, which is in control of Gaza, might go to these elections in a joint list. Is that even conceivable? What would that actually mean for Palestinian politics vis-a-vis -vis your own society with Israel and with the United States? Would Hamas be acceptable? Well, unfortunately, it was more than conceivable. I think it was part of, of a deal that actually was concluded between Fatah and, and, and Hamas. And while, uh, by the way, I am big supporters, strong supporters of any attempt to achieve reunification and achieve unity, nevertheless, I thought that deal as something uh, lacking credibility, lacking substance, and something that might lead to 
even entrenchment of, uh, uh, of the split rather than ending, uh, ending the split. And that's why I came out publicly against, uh, against the idea as well as against the idea of the joint list between Fatah and Hamas. Let me say this also, that the uh, opposition to the idea is great internally inside Fatah and inside Hamas, and that's why it might not take place in, in real life. Well, let me just let me just give give sort of you know numbers to what you mean. The opposition is against. Um, there are polling by a respected Palestinian polling uh, organization that says Mahmoud Abbas, the current president of the Palestinian Authority, would only get nine percent in a future election. Ismail Haniyeh, who's head of Hamas in Gaza, would only get fourteen percent. But 22% that said that Marwan Barghouti would get their vote. Now, of course, he is the Palestinian activist and leader who's in jail inside Israel. Is there any way that the system allows Palestinians to vote for a jailed leader? And what would that mean? I think the system should allow... Palestinians to, to vote to jail leader to any or any other leader. I mean, it should be free choice for every Palestinian. And I, 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 I was hoping that uh, Banwan Barghouti, my friend and my comrade, would, would join our movement and join our trend and support it. Nevertheless, I respect his choices and let's see what will happen later on. When we arrive to the uh, presidential elections, we said that if he runs, after the support uh, that should be, should be given to the Palestinian National uh, Democratic Assembly, we would support him. Uh, so anyway, this is this is now left to to the future, and we will see what uh, what will happen. Uh, generally speaking, polls in the Palestinian society might not be that accurate. Uh, it's cultural matter, and by the way, we in the uh, Palestinian NDA. Uh, are very young and probably we were not around when this this poll was taken. Right. So let me ask you the the obviously the international question, and that is about the peace process. You know, many many people don't believe that there is a two state solution on the table anymore. Do you believe in it? And well, first of all, do you believe that the two state solution is possible still to achieve? There is no doubt about that. It's the only way forward. Nevertheless, let me say this. The term two-state solution has become uh, linked to the never-ended peace process, never-ended perpetual negotiations that, that is useless, totally useless. But uh, the Palestinian people, for instance, are committed overwhelmingly to their national right, their national identity, their national state, by the way, that does exist by virtue of the natural right of the Palestinian people, by virtue of the historic right, by virtue of international legitimacy, by virtue of the recognition by the majority of states of the, of, of the state of Palestine. So by virtue of all this, the state does exist. Under occupation, yes, subject to uh, settler colonialism, yes. But this is the struggle, the struggle for uh, liberty and national independence. Now, if this comes through negotiations, all, all the better. Of course, we want that. But unfortunately, the Israeli trend, general trend, which is now prov proved again to be right and more extreme right and a uh, little bit of center and, and things like that. Unfortunately, this trend seems not to be uh, willing to have a serious solution, seems to be uh, uh, wanting everything so we have ministers that would come publicly and say this is all ours, utter craziness. That has to end. And I think an uh, important part of it has to come from the United States, from the new Biden administration. I hope that this okay. will be the case. And then if this does happen, we will be able probably to move again forward. So that was going to be my next question, because you just said Israel, you know, makes these claims. And of course, the previous administration, the Trump administration, gave Israel what many called a carte blanche um, to continue uh, its, its control of, of so much of the West Bank. And also broke off diplomatic relations with you, with the, with the Palestinian Authority. 
Now the Biden administration has said it wants to resume them. They want diplomatic relations with you, the Palestinians. Should you go back to negotiations? Let me, let me say this. First, uh, there are some Palestinians that they claim all, all of the land of Palestine as, as theirs. The only difference that the Israelis saying that now come from the top, come, come from the, 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 the cabinet. And that's, that's very dangerous indeed. As far as the Trump administration, I think they uh, violated the established U.S. policy before I speak about international law and international positions. The U.S. policy itself was drastically violated, and frankly, what Trump administration presented was basically the policy and position of Israeli settlers, extreme right, and the policy and positions of uh, Christian Zionists, if the term is, is correct, the extreme part of, of, of them. That was the deadlock. That was a road that leads to nothing but more blood and more sweat and more suffering and more difficulties. And it should have ended. For Palestinians, to tell you the truth, the most important thing at the time of the U.S. election was who was leaving, not who was coming. And there was a sigh of relief that Mr. Trump has left. And that was very good news, not only for the Palestinians, I think for the whole world as well. Now we want to see a movement back to the established U.S. policy, movement back to respect of international law, a movement back to more balanced policies and position vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians and the Israelis. And if this happens, again, yes, of course, we will be ready to move forward and to meet, every, to meet the other side in the middle based on respect of our mutual rights. And that, let me specify uh, again, so respect for the existence of the state of Palestine. Very, very briefly, and, and finally, I want to ask you, because there's been suggestions of, of elections in, in, in the West Bank for a long time, and each and every one of them have been cancelled over the years. Do you believe that these parliamentary elections in May and then the presidential in July will actually go ahead? I hope so, and I keep my finger crossed. Let me put it that simple. All right. Well, there's a lot of finger crossing to be done in your region, and we will continue to follow it. Thank you so much for joining us.